but it won't last if their personal development isn't there. That's why when we talked about earlier that rich people study, admire, respect other successful people, they study and admire. Guess what they do? They read the books. They learn them. They study them. They're working on themselves. We often talk about rich people have a big library while poor people have a big screen TV. <laughs> On credit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, I happen to have a book. I got a lot of books, but I've got a big screen TV, not on credit. You know what I mean? Only, only credit that I got is a little bit. That's to build up my credit. That's it. One of my mentors said to me, JC, do not have a comfortable couch or a comfortable TV until you've made a million dollars. And I didn't. Until I did. Then I went in and I said, I'm going to buy, I said, I'm going to get me a big screen TV. I'm going to get me direct TV because I love to watch Shark Tank and I love to watch fights. And I'm going to get a DVR with it because I'm not going to watch it when everybody else is watching it. I'm going to watch it when, at the designated time that I set for myself. After my day is done and I went and I knocked it out of the park for the day, my shows are recorded and I'm going to watch them. Then I'm going to delete them. But I'm going to get first things first, second things never. First things first, kick ass, to do. To-do list, win. Number two, kick ass. That's it. Does that make sense? Yeah. I go out there and I win, I kick ass, I do the best I can with that day, then I go and I watch, I'll watch my fights. Hang out with my son. My son loves to watch fights with me. And then uh, we watch his shows as well. You know? Yeah, and he, he gets into it, man. He's on his little bouncy thing, and he just, Sometimes he falls asleep in his little bouncy thing. <laughs> it's kind of funny, I record it. <laughs> Rich people have their money work for them. Poor people work hard for their money. And this, now, how can you get to that point about who you associate with? What if you start associating with people? What if you start associating with people that know how to do that? Will you learn how to do that? Yes. Of course. What if you read books on people that know how to do that? You'll learn how to do that. What if you get a mentor that knows how to do that? What if you get a mentor in a business where it's in his best interest to teach you how to do that? Will he teach you? Of course. Profits are better than wages. <clears throat> Money comes easily and frequently from different streams and increasing quantities. Number 16, rich people act in spite of fear. Poor people let fear stop them. Fear, there's an acronym about fear. It says, false evidence appearing real. Fear and faith are two things that haven't happened yet and in the future. And you get to choose which one you believe in. You could choose to believe in fear. So guess what? You're in a frequency, a negative frequency. You're focused on fear. You're in a negative frequency. Faith is a positive frequency. They're, they both haven't happened. And you get to choose on two things that are invisible that haven't happened yet. But here's the rub. What you focus on grows. You, you got them both right there, on the left and the right. Let's say fear is on this side, faith is on that side for the things you want. But most people tend to focus on that. And guess what? They start doing it, drawing it like a magnet. And it's easy to focus on fear. Let me tell you why. Because on TV, the internet, the news, for instance. How many people watch the news? Let's be honest. How many people watch the news? Okay. Can we agree that the news is a fr the first thing that they'll tell you is good evening? Then they proceed to tell you why it's not so good. <laughs> right? Good evening. Kids be shot. <laughs> Huge earthquake killed thousands of people over there. Negative, negative, negative. Then have yourself a good night. <laughs> and you want to say, like, damn, man, I'm so, life is depressing. Oh my God, and you're thinking, honey, did you hear about that kid that got shot? Did you hear about the dude that got Ebola? Oh, that dude that got Ebola. <laughs> In Linwood. Did you hear about that other get? Oh my God, it's so depressing. And then you, and then that goes, that, that's also going to go into your subconscious mind and start cooking up a cocktail of fear, bad energy, right? Negative frequency. And let me tell you something. It is by design. You guys think that uh, in the news they give us, 
the real stuff? No. No. It is programmed. They don't, they don't give us what we need to know. They give us what they want us to know. Does that make sense? It's real talk. And a lot of it has to do with getting people to believe in a certain way. That way the masses are able to get moved. Little by little. The, this is all programming. And then, when people are in this negative state of mind, they're being programmed with nothing but negative, they can't attract anything positive. Why do you think so? I guarantee you, the richest people in the world aren't, at, aren't watching TV that, like the way we do. They might be watching like stocks and stuff like that and companies going up and down and stuff like that, but they're not watching negative stuff and feeling bad about it and getting depressed about it. I guarantee you they're not. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. One of my favorite quotes is, what is your best favorite Lamborghini commercial? You don't have one because they don't make them because the people that drive Lamborghinis or Ferraris aren't at home watching TV. And it doesn't need advertising, does it? No. It's true. That's the difference. 17. Rich people constantly learn and grow. Poor people think they already know. That's, that, that's so true, man. The people that I know that are the least successful always say this, I know. Anybody have people say that? Yeah. When I was a kid, I used to say it all the time. My mom used to correct me or, or scold me. I know, I know. <laughs> I know. How many of you guys used to do that when you were kids? Be honest. Yeah. All right. My, my brothers used to do that. I hated that. So I would beat them up. <laughs> oh, you know. Bam! Did you, did you know that punch was coming? That's what I thought, bro. Keep it on. You're going to learn today. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? The best investment you can make is in yourself. Formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. Work on yourself. One of the things that we teach them on in our system is 10 pages of a good book a day. I challenge you to read 10 pages of the book. Here's the deal. The average personal development book has 300 pages. By the way, for those of you guys on the team, this will make a lot of sense to you. The average book on personal development is an average of 300 pages. If you read 10 pages a day, how many pages a month is that approximately? 300. 300. That's a book a month. You see how it's designed that way? Yeah. Yeah. Now here's the thing. The books like Think and Grow Rich, The Laws of Success, which by the way, I'm going to be doing a training in the next couple of weeks on the laws of success. That is the original. The Laws of Success came out and in like the first year or two, it created 3,000 millionaires in the 20s. In the 20s, 1920s. 3,000. Henry Ford and a bunch of people said, take that book off the shelves. People can't know that information. Then they recreated the book, came out with another one. They took out a lot of information. Said, still too much information, take it out. Then they came out with the book that we know now as Think and Grow Rich. It's a watered down version. I have the original 1920 edition of the Laws of Success. It's in my office. That's what we're going to be training on next week. How many of you guys like that? Yeah, yeah. How many of you guys like the information you're getting already? Yes. We're going to be training on that book. We are going to go and create champions and millionaires on purpose. See, here's the thing. What if I'm able to create 10 millionaires, 20 millionaires out of here? You think I'll be okay? Yes. yes. And I'm doing it sincerely. And I know that the law says you, you want to give to somebody else that which you want to get. Have other per people experience it themselves first. Because what you give, you get to keep. Times seven. Does that make sense, guys? It's crazy, man. So we are on purpose going to go on a personal development rampage. So 10 pages of a good book a day. Is that too much to ask for? No. 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 <coughs> man, imagine if you approve 1% a day. How much is that a year? Imagine that. There's some people that don't improve 1% or 2% a year. See, because it's, how do you eat an elephant? One bite, One bite at a time. <laughs> how do you get to 365% better a year? 1% at a time. 10 pages of a good book a day. Easy to do, problem is, easier not to do. That's the situation. Situation is, it's easier not to do. And that's why most people won't do it. Because sports centers on. <laughs> Straight up, real talk. That's why it's not hard to make a lot of money. You, you, you don't got no competition. It's like, all right, you got to show up to the marathon, all right? Got to get first place. But here's the deal. Nobody showed up. 
So just run. So it doesn't matter how long it takes you, because you're competing by yourself. Would that be okay? Yeah. But guess what? Five people showed up, but chances are they're all going to get distracted. Because <laughs> there's wing house along the way. There's a BJ's along the way. And their friends are going to be partying there. All you got to do is stay the course. You guys see what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. And most people will not stay the course. Straight up. Most people think right now that they're going to stay the course because New Year's resolution. <laughs> that New Year's resolution BS. Yeah, right. Most people made the same New Year's resolution here that they did five years ago. And they're going to do the same one next year. When I found that out and I realized this stuff, I'm like, it's subtle changes. Boom, 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 boom. That I make, that I make a huge impact. Okay, guys. Moving right along. Now we're going to get into the science of getting rich. So the reason why I shared that with you earlier is because a lot of the stuff that you saw prior in these 17 slides, it'll make this stuff more uh, easier to understand. Now there's a lot to read, so bear with me, okay guys? Number one, the right to re be rich. The very best thing you can do for, for yourself and for the whole world is to make the most of yourself. So you have to understand, first of all, that there is a right to be rich. You do have a right to be rich. No man can rise to his greatest possible height and talent or soul development unless he has plenty of money. Now, people say things like, well, Mother Teresa didn't have a lot of money. Mother Teresa wasn't rich. Well, I beg to differ. I bet you Mother Teresa had a private jet at her disposal if she wanted to. Did she have to pay for it? No. no. People would do anything for her, wouldn't they? No. Just because she didn't physically have money in her pockets in her bank account. I don't know her personal situation, but that doesn't mean she wasn't rich. So when we talk about rich, I want you to understand something. First of all, it's not just money. Rich means we're talking about everything, every aspect of your life. Okay, your relationships, your happiness, your, your, your soul development, your spirituality. As a matter of fact, the best way that you can help the poor is by stop being one of them. The poor don't need charity, they need inspiration. Prove it to them by becoming rich yourself. What if we're both poor? We both make each other feel bad, depressed. You guys ever seen somebody say, man, this happened to me, like a bad or depressing or bad situation, and then the other guy tries to top it. Anybody ever seen that happen? Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Dude, my tire blew up. Bro, think that's something. Check it out, bro. My engine blew up. It's gonna cost me 3,000 bucks. <laughs> my car's only worth two. <laughs> Damn, you got it bad. Then the other guy, hey, check it out, guys. You guys think you got something, huh? My house got robbed. My wife left me. And they rebuilt my car. Top that. You, you get my point though, right? What are they focused on? They're focused on the negative. So the best thing you can help the poor is not being one of them. Because guess what you can give them? A lot of us were told as kids that we need to be satisfied with what we got. But when we talk about the poor guys, we can give them more inspiration. Can't we? Imagine if you went from being poor, broke, to being rich. Will you inspire other people? Yeah. I think it was Bill Gates that said, if you were born poor, that is not your fault. But if you die poor, that is your fault. Because yes. you have the decisions that one, one thing we got full control of is our thoughts. And our thoughts create our feelings, our emotions, our decisions. So if you die poor, that is your fault. A lot of us were told that we need to be satisfied with what we have, but that's not true. Some people might be like having a problem with what I just said. Just let me finish. We are to be happy and grateful with what we've got. But you don't need to be satisfied. When you have a desire for something, that is proof that you can achieve that something. If not, you wouldn't have had that desire. This is key. If you have the desire to achieve something, that is proof. That is your creator telling you that you, Bernardo, can have that. If not, they wouldn't have put that desire in you. Does that make sense? Yeah. See, dissatisfaction brought air travel. Dissatisfaction brought the telephone. Dissatisfaction brought the automobile, the internet. Somebody was dissatisfied, did something about it, and made life better for everybody else. Can we agree? Yes, dissatisfaction brought social networks, whether that's a good or a bad thing. Some people would think it's a bad thing. I think they're good and bad. Anything in excess is good or bad, I, I would think. That's my opinion. I think it's a great tool to communicate with. What I don't like is that it, uh, it's to keep people connected, but a lot of people are not connected to the world. You know what I mean? 
Anyways, but we are not to be satisfied. These are thoughts, thought patterns, and paradigms that were put in our head. Oh, you need to be satisfied with what you've got. Here's another thing that people would say to us. Bad things in, what? Bad things out. Instead, they could have said good things in, what? Good things out. Somewhere along the line, somebody was programmed to say, focus on nothing but the negative. There's a Spanish one that I love. Poquito pero, seguro. That means a little, a little bit of money, but it's sure money. So they justify their job. Oh, hey, listen, man, I may not make a lot of money, bro, but I make a little, but it's sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> you have a job, it's not sure. Does that make sense? Yeah. Straight up. So don't be satisfied. Be happy, though. Be grateful. Don't be ungrateful. If you're not satisfied with what you got, it doesn't mean that you need to be ungrateful. Don't be ungrateful for it. Okay. Get rid of the idea that it is wrong to be rich. Money or that money is a root of all evil. It's the love of money that's a root of all evil. Money is neutral. Money is not good or bad. The person, our thoughts, make it so. To me, money is great. Somebody said a long time ago, one of my mentors said a long time ago, he says, if you think money is the root of all evil, give me all your evil. <laughs> I'll take it. Because I'll find some good to do with it. You guys see what I'm talking about? See, that guy's mindset, he understood it. Like Mother Teresa, when we talk about these things, it relates. She said, don't invite, in the secret, she said, don't, in, well, they mentioned it in the secret. She said, don't invite me to an anti-war rally. Invite me to a peace rally. See that? Oh, you should come to support, you know, uh, this is anti-war. But it's anti-war, it's against war. No, but you are focused on what? Peace. War. War. Focus on peace. And, tighten, and invite me to a peace rally. Because what you focus on expands. What you focus on grows. What you resist persists. Oh, they're resisting war. They're resisting poverty. Right? Guess what? I'd rather talk about abundance. How can we help people? I speak of those, it says in the side of getting rich, speak of those who are poor as those becoming rich. See what I'm talking about? You don't get rich by doing certain things. You get rich by doing certain things in a certain way. Waters, waters, the science of getting rich. Okay. Let's, let's talk about some limiting beliefs about money. We, talk, we touched on this earlier. Number one, money is the root of all evil. When in reality, money was created as an exchange medium for the, for the value of traded goods. So it's just an expression of value. If you have a lot of money, that means that you have created a lot of value for other people. How many people of you guys are getting the value for what you paid for your ticket here today? Yes. Okay? Exactly. So when somebody makes a lot of money, it's not the root of all evil. It is just created as an exchange medium for traded goods and services. It is an expression of value you provided for somebody. If you have a lot of money, it means you have created a lot of value for other people. That's it. So remember, we all have a relationship. It's called a money blueprint. We all have a relationship with money. If your relationship with money has been your whole life that money is bad and rich people are bad, filthy rich, they've done something wrong, they, they've wronged somebody to get their money, then money will evade you. It's like you're not respecting him. Imagine if money is a person. You're like, oh man, money. You know, you're, you're like talking bad about it. You think that person's gonna wanna hang out with you? Nope. Money is not that important, it's only money. Treat money with respect and give it the time it deserves. Then it will respect you. So replace, replace these affirmations. So money is a root of all evil, you replace it with money is neutral and a resource to do good in my life. These are negative limiting beliefs and the, 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 the highlighted part, the beige part, is what you're gonna replace it with, okay? Money is not important, it's just money. No, money is one of my priorities in life. Because we now understand that money is great, that we can use money wisely, and we can help and bless others with it. So that's what you want to replace it with. Number three, money is not that important. It is just money. Treat money with respect and give it the deserved needs, and it will respect you. Money is one of my, oh, okay, so I guess, let me see. Okay, we repeated that one, so. Number four is really number three. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. How many of you guys heard that before? Okay. My financial reality is entirely up to me. That's a positive affirmation you're using instead. Okay. It's not the rich get rich and the poor get poor because you can 